上面加来，然后再往上看。可以。那不行，现在看今天请到瑞士商务代表处的副处长，他的名字 ，how how to call your name， 叫李杰 ，John Didier， 下辈子 John Didier， 因为这是华文，那所以他呃我们可以看到他只他读出了 ，he speak French， German， Swiss German dialect， English， Spanish， 啊，那表示说他在过去这几十年。在很多世界不同的国家，包括这个啊，奥斯洛、托尼斯啊，他他他当驻外代表处的啊，还有这个哥伦比亚啊，塞内塞内加啊，斯威登，大概全世界这个比较比较有名的国家他都去过了啊，然后他在象牙海岸啊，然后他二零一零年开始在我们台北的那个。呃，瑞士商务办事处叫 TOSI 啊，那他呃除了当顾问以外呢，还当这个教育的组长，教育的组长，还当这个旅游的观光处的处长啊，还有这个文化。所以各位，假如说要去呃 ，if you want to study in Switzerland, maybe we can visit you and、uh, to get some consultancy from you。所以他对这个。教呃瑞士的教育呢？那我们现在在台湾跟瑞士合作的很大的一块是这个瑞士观光的呃学校啊，就是说呃瑞士他们是全世界观光还有银行呃算是最好的，那所以我们台湾已经有非常多的人呢在瑞士取得他们的呃 tourism 呃 certification of the your, your college 呃 tourism tourism college of of Switzerland is very famous。那所以，呃，除此之外，就是说，瑞士还是很多欧洲人的避税天堂啊。那在去年，这个德国的检察官跑去瑞士要检查这个他们德国人藏在瑞士的钱藏多少啊。那结果，瑞士的瑞士的这个呃这个检察官呢，就就呃禁止这些德国人去调查这些资料啊。所以，他们银行对客户的保密是非常。非常好。那今天因为我们很高兴请他来，那我们就把比较把多的时间留给他。We welcome you to、uh, give the lecture to us, and we, we, we wish you a very happy time in Taiwan. Okay, we give the time to you. Okay, thank you. I have to to tell everybody that I'm not a good speaker. 
So please excuse my hesitations when I'm, uh, when I'm speaking. First of all, I would like to welcome you to this, uh, to this lecture. And uh, I have to say that Professor Chen gave me a very, very short notice, uh, the topic of today, that would be Switzerland, a controversial democracy. Uh, I come back from, I'm just back from holiday one week ago, and I found a mail from Professor Chen, oh, could you, could you take this topic? And I was very busy, and I tried to make my best about uh, controversial democracy in Switzerland. Switzerland is meant to be the oldest democracy in the world. So, is that right? Is that not right? Good question. In order to understand a little bit how democracy uh, evolved in Switzerland, we first have to make a small, uh, uh, small trip in, uh, in Swiss history. First of all, Switzerland. Where is Switzerland? Who knows already Switzerland? Uh, it is, of course, it's a small country in the middle of Western Europe with a huge Germany on the north, a huge France on the, on the west, a huge Italy on the south, and a medium Austria on the east, as well as a very, 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 very small Liechtenstein. That's still a principality. If you think Switzerland, you think Zurich, of course. You think Geneva, or uh, St. Moritz, Lucerne, certainly, Zermatt, with Matterhorn. You think mountains, and you think Jungfrau region, and you think trains, nice trains to go, uh, to go through the Alps. But Switzerland exists already since the Roman time under the name of Helvetia. The Roman, uh, the Roman Empire invaded Switzerland and left some uh, remains in uh, uh, Octoduru, Aventicum, or uh, Augusta Raurica. So this for the very, very old age. In the year so no, uh, so the legion says 1291. First of all, there's 1291, but that's the that's the legion. The, the reality is that three Alpine cantons uh, decided to help each other to make a pact in order to, on one side, uh, protect the rights they had from the Austrian Empire as the Emperor of Austria of not of Austria it was the holy uh, the holy German Empire with uh, in, living in Austria living in Vienna uh, this empire, uh, emperor had given a lot of advantages to those valleys because those valleys were controlling the the passage between north and south of the Alps to the heart. And the empire died, and the canton were, uh, the people of the canton were quite afraid to lose uh, those uh, advantages. In the course of the years, there are some cantons heading Lucerne first, Zurich afterwards, Glarus and Zug a little bit later, then Bern. Bern, if you watch, it's about 50 years that Switzerland begins to exist. There are two colors, green and blue. I will say why a little bit later. And between 1353 and 1480, nothing happens in the, in the creation of Switzerland, but in, uh, in the middle of the 15th century, there were very little wars. It's a fresh story that was implicating Switzerland. And after these uh, Burgundy wars, 
the cantons of Fribourg, Solothurn, Basel, Schaffhausen, and lately Appenzell joined the Confederation. And this Confederation will stay until 1803, like this. The Reformation, of course, has an influence on the, on the cantons, as you see that canton of uh, Appenzell will part in two half cantons because one will be Protestant and the other uh, will be Roman Catholic. Uh, and nothing happens very much until the, the end of the 18th century. In the, in the meantime, uh, those, this part of Switzerland, they also had invaded some, uh, some parts of the, some rest parts. In yellow, so known uh, balayage, a common balayage, it means uh, they were common, uh, those parts belonged were under the rule of several, one canton or several cantons. So uh, territories and uh, common territories. In fact, of course, my card is a modern, a modern card. In fact, it, it was looking like that. It was looking like that in, uh, in light green, in light green, the confederation of the cantons. So they had those, uh, those uh, common, uh, common territories. In dark blue, I'm sorry, I forgot it. In dark blue, that is a position of the canton of Bern. Bern invaded this, uh, this part of, uh, of Switzerland and was uh, ruling uh, absolutely alone on it, as an own position, not as a common position, and not as a balayage. Then there is the French Revolution. That, in the, that, that has some influence on Switzerland and the invasion of Switzerland by Napoleon. Napoleon uh, pushes the creation of a so known Helvetic Republic on the. Uh, how is it in English? Uh, on the image of the, the French state. It means one very, very strong uh, head of state, and nobody, uh, nobody else having any competences. So what do I have now? <laughs> OK, uh, now you can see that more cantons join, 1803, under the influence of Napoleon, the other Republic. Uh, in 1803, the last cantons will join 1815. We joined 1815 after the shoot of Napoleon and the Congress of Vienna, reparting uh, repart, uh, Europe. Just to be funny, a very funny story is this uh, big, big place. It's the, the principal, no, sorry, the uh, county, the county of Neuchâtel, that remains a possession of the, uh, of the King of Prussia. The King of Prussia have got uh, some territories, and it remains. So it is a canton, a Swiss canton, and this will stay uh, will remain until 1848. In 1848, the most important uh, thing, okay, 1833 is just a, the partition of Basel, uh, Basel in two half cantons because of uh, lack of democracy. Okay. Uh, 1848, of course, the point, the main point uh, in the history of Switzerland, the promulgation of the first federal constitution. This first federal constitution is copied on the model of the U.S. Constitution, giving the giving uh, the cantons a status of uh, a status of state. The, there is a central government, a central uh, federal council that rules the defense, that rules the currency. You imagine that before the promulgation of the constitution, every canton has its own currency, has its own 
to all barriers so that uh, every uh, uh, the goods traveling through Switzerland had to pay uh, toll.